four daily TV shows and constant online updates, news about NASCAR was delivered weekly to your mailbox. When the race is over, the scene begins. The Winston Cup scene. It's the largest and most informative NASCAR Winston Cup newspaper in the country. You gotta read Winston Cup scene. You gotta read Winston Cup scene. For 32 years, Grind National Winston Cup NASCAR scene provided some of the most influential coverage of NASCAR available. When publisher Robert Griggs printed the first issue in April 1977, Grand National Scene became the first weekly publication devoted exclusively to what was then known as the NASCAR Winston Cup Series. I'd heard of Grand National Scene during that time. We fellow uh, motorsports journalists and I sort of snickered at it. I mean, Did we, you really? Oh, oh, yeah, why was that? Yeah, well, the way it was being sold. It was found by a fellow named Robert E. Griggs, Jr., out of Alabama. And we could watch him in the infield at Talladega, hawking that paper, walking wow. around, holding okay. up his only a quarter, yeah. trying to sell that paper. Well, that seemed pretty funny to me, and I'd be, I was one of those who thought that he'd never make it doing that sort of stuff. The formation of scene came at the same time NASCAR entered a tremendous change. Television coverage of the sport increased, and the paper provided in-depth analysis of the growing sport. There's a fight between Cale Yarborough and Donnie Allison. The tempers overflowing. They're angry. They know they have lost. And what a bitter defeat. In late 1981, a new monthly magazine was introduced as well. Grand National Illustrated would run as a sister publication to Scene for nearly three decades. As Scene evolved, many talented individuals were added to the paper staff, including Pat Howe, who became the first woman to write for the paper in early 1980. Jean Granger wrote many of the articles in the first few years. And Steve Wade was hired as executive editor in 1981. I took the job and I came into my office the first day. His office was a converted country store. <laughs> when I looked at the, where I was to work, I had one of these metal desks, one of these old-time royal typewriters, and a chicken wire inbox. <laughs> That's it. But I looked at it and I said, what the heck have I done? Wade quickly became one of the leading voices for Grand National Scene, appearing on radio and television to provide analysis of NASCAR events. With today's thoughts from the grandstand, here's the executive editor of Grand National Scene newspaper and Grand National Illustrated magazine, Steve Wade. Well, Steve, I guess you're the editor, is that right, of Grand National Scene magazine? Publisher? Well, yeah. head gopher. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> In addition, Wade became president of the National Motorsports Press Association in 1987 and won numerous awards for his writing. The way you looked at it was, I think that uh, you found that these guys had personalities. 
And if you were a good reporter, you reported what they did, but you reported who they were. And these guys have had such great stories to tell that go beyond racing. So the thing that was really uh, good about dealing with these athletes was that they, they transcended the sport. They went and told you something about themselves. And when they gained your confidence, as I think most of these guys here have, they would confide, you know, they would be secrets they'd confide in. They'd confide about their personal lives. What should I do? Ask your advice, things of that nature. And you'd do the same to them. So it became more than just a one-on-one -on -one professional relationship. It became a personal relationship as well. Through the 1980s, the lineup of talented staff grew to include Deb Williams, Joe Whitlock, Jack Flowers, and Gary McCready. After spending six years with UPI and a year as a writer for the television show Inside NASCAR, Deb Williams joined Scene in January 1986. Over the next 18 years, she was one of the paper's biggest influences. After writing an article on the effects of carbon monoxide on drivers in 1990, Williams won the Charlotte Motor Speedway Russ Catlin Award for Excellence in Motorsports Journalism. In 1991, she won the award again and became the first person to win it back-to-back. -back. Williams also won the NMPA Rider of the Year Award twice. By the mid-1990s, Williams was one of only two riders to win each of the most prestigious awards in motorsports journalism. The Catlin Award, the NMPA Rider of the Year, and the Henry McLemore Award. And standing by is the well-known motorsports journalist Joe Whitlock. Dale Earnhardt, that was quite a run today. Riding for scene, Joe Whitlock won the National Motorsports Press Association Award for column writing every year he entered. The popular writer also spent time as Dale Earnhardt's PR man in the years before his death in 1991. Holding a camera, scene's photographers were award-winning as well. Then we have to go back to the lab, process the film, edit, make prints. Our deadline is 8 o'clock Monday morning. Phil Cavalli and Bill Anderson won the Catlin Award for their photojournalism. The NMPA gave awards to Brian Holman, James Price, Mark Sluter, Jim Fluharty, Baby Matia, and many others. Scene was known for its breaking news, personality profiles, and award-winning photography. As NASCAR grew, so did the paper covering it. Scene was there for historic moments. Bill Elliott is racing into the record books. Bill Elliott is going toward immortality. Bill Elliott gets the checker flag. Bill Elliott has won an additional one million dollars in 1985. They captured breathtaking crashes, There's Stanley Smith in the middle in the black car. There is one car that has gone over the wall, as you see in that. He goes to the outside. His Edwards goes over and turns it. No, no. They saw the crowning of champions. The making of legends and gave condolences for the lost friends. Uh, he won a race at Richmond and in the old days you could write and get back home in time to see what the 11 o'clock news had to say. Well on this particular Sunday night at 11 o'clock the news announcer was very very raw, very green, made a lot of mistakes and he got to the Richmond race and this is what he said. He said today in Richmond the race was won by the famous French race driver, Niles Bonnet. I hit the floor when I heard that. I couldn't wait to get to Neil. So I told a couple of buddies of mine, we went in the garage area at the next race and started yelling, Niles Bonnet, Niles Bonnet. And he looked at us like we were crazy. He said, what are you boys talking about? He said, we told him the Richmond story. Your name is now Niles Bonnet. It led, it got to be crazy. Bobby Allison was calling him Niles Bonnet. We had guys uh, paging him from the... <laughs> from up there, the PA system, Niles Bonet, please report to the NASCAR trailer. It was hilarious. So he decided that for a while there, he'd call himself Niles Bonet. When anybody called him Neil, he wouldn't answer. <laughs>
but Scene also provided an unfiltered look at the true personalities of NASCAR. Some infamous, some funny, some up and coming, and pretty much everything else imaginable. scene was so synonymous with NASCAR that it was even depicted in movies and video games. Hey, brother. How about this? <laughs> The paper changed its name from Grand National Scene to Winston Cup Scene in 1989. In 1992, Griggs Publishing sold the Scene brand to Street and Smith Sports Group, a subsidiary of American City Business Journals. And it's Kyle Petty. Kyle Petty coming to the checkered flag. Here comes Davy Allison to the bottom. It'll be the finish. Everybody oh, was oh, waiting for that. Oh, they wait, crashed man. past the finish line. Uh -oh. Around this time, Scene's writing staff grew to include David Green, Tom Stinson, and Rick Houston, among others. is the wall coming off the corner. Through the mid-90s, Scene was on the spot for some of the sport's most notable moments, sometimes right in the middle of it. As the media landscape changed in the late 90s, scene changed with it. A website was added to provide up-to-the-minute news and updates. As NASCAR moved into a new era, scene covered the significant moments of the 2000s. Paper's staff of writers also continued to be top-notch. Mark Ashenfelter joined Scene in February 1999. He won the Catlin Award in 2002. In April 2001, Jeff Owens was named Scene's executive editor. Writing for the paper, Mike Hembry won the Catlin Award in 2005 and 2008. Kenny Bruce won NMP awards nearly every year between 2002 and 2009, and the organization's Joe Littlejohn Award in 2007. Ree White won the Catlin Award in 2005 and the Littlejohn Award in 2006. Bob Pockris joined Scene in 2003 and during his time there was named the NMPA's Writer of the Year in 2009. Jeff Gluck joined Scene in 2007 and won NMPA awards in 2008 and 2009. I, I decided to do a story on um, the race after the race, which was, you know, the race to get to there, the Jets, and how they escaped the track and things like that, and beat each other back to Charlotte. Completely wrote the story, and then I just sent it to Jeff Owens and, you know, said, here's a freelance submission, you know, I would love to have this in scene, you know, not thinking they would actually take it. And Jeff said, yeah, wow, this is 
this is really cool. And they, they uh, published it with artwork, and uh, I was like, wow, I got a story in scene. Scene even expanded their coverage to include daily online videos of their staff. Hello everyone, welcome to SceneDaily.com. I'm Steve Wade along with Batlin, Bob Pockers, and Jolton Jeff Gluck. Jolton. Okay guys, Jolton, I thought it was pretty good. Okay. Unfortunately, as all print media began to suffer around 2009, so did NASCAR Scene. Amid an increasingly digital environment, the weekly newspaper couldn't remain profitable. The final issue of Scene was published in December 2009. The remnants were merged into NASCAR Illustrated while most of the staff was released. At the 2019 NASCAR Hall of Fame induction ceremony, Scene's longtime editor and publisher, Steve Wade, was honored with the Squire Hall Award for NASCAR Media Excellence. It was recognition for the great legacy and influence that Wade and Scene had on the sport of NASCAR. I am really, really honored to uh, receive this award. I guess I'm also saying that it serves as a recognition of the work that I've done. I'm, I'm not, you know, any kind of media giant by any imagination, being a stretch of imagination, but to have your work recognized in this fashion is very, very humbling. Having collected every issue of Scene from the first in 1977 to the last in 2009, former staff writer Rick Houston's goal is to digitalize each and make it available in an online archive for all to enjoy. But until then, the Scene Bought podcast is devoted to NASCAR history in general, and in particular, to the publication's place in covering the sport for more than three decades, featuring interviews with racing legends, former staff members, and stories from the past. The podcast keeps alive the spirit of NASCAR's rich and storied legacy and its most influential weekly newspaper. I'm into the scene. Why don't you get into the scene too?